Welcome back everybody. Uh, today's video is basically going to be assembling the entire pump and uh, going through what I left out in the last torque converter video and there's a lot of good stuff to uh, cover so as far as that goes we're going to go through the, the rest of the hydraulics in the pump and completely assembling the pump, putting bushings in, uh, pump bushing all that and uh, building our tower. We're going to build the tower today have the pump together so the whole guts of the transmission is done so stick around this should be a good one and i got a lot of good information to share so let's just get into it man okay another uh important system in this whole system itself is if you come closer you have like i said before 80 percent of the heat is being made in this torque converter because of those two are just churning and burning fluid but in that circuit, there's two other uh, things going on. In that circuit itself is your cooler. So coming out of the torque converter, and most transmissions work like this, coming out of the torque converter goes through your cooler. So the hottest fluid coming out of the transmission is going to your cooler, and it goes through your cooler, and then it, it enters the transmission in your gear train. All transmissions work like that. But that's the reason they do that, is to get the hottest fluid in the trans to the cooler instead of having it the opposite way, I guess. So one, one note there. And also, uh, just want to talk about drain back a little bit. <clears throat> and what converter drain back is, is uh, say you let a, a car or truck, whatever, sit over the weekend and if you just fired it up and you threw it right into gear without letting it run and it wouldn't move, uh, a lot of times it's, it's basically called converter drain back. And if you look at this, say the car, this is uh, basically your transmission and your converter. Say your car sat over the weekend and it had a leak in, in that circuit. The converter literally would drain back down all the way to that point, that's the lowest point that it can drain back into the sump. But if that goes half dry and you fire the fire the uh, fire the car up and throw it right into gear and it won't move, it's because that converter is not fully charged with fluid. So the pump has to start working, fill the converter all the way back up again, and then the car will go right into gear and be fine. So it's just a, a cool note. If you ever run across that problem, it's basically because you're, you're getting converted drain back. <clears throat> but one of the main reasons I want to show this is this is in the E4OD 4100 shift kit. See if I can find it here. Okay, another thing on this cooler, if you look at this uh, circuit here, there's two more things in here. I mentioned the cooler a minute ago, but you got the cooler here and if you look at this trans it comes out of the cooler or out of the transmission here and it goes up through your transmission cooler through the radiator and from your radiator it goes back to the bottom here and if you notice real close here there's a check ball seat in here and what that's uh, meant to do is keep the entire cooler system charged anytime that the vehicle's not running because if that ball wasn't there all the cooler fluid could leak through and it actually could cause drain back also if it created suction and everything leaked back down in the sump but the main reason for it is the fact that that needs to be charged all the time because some people just start a vehicle and throw it into gear and if that cooler system isn't charged with fluid, you won't get cooler flow to your gear train for, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. And over time, that can damage the uh, gear train. So very important, that check ball and uh, seat there is to keep the cooler charged and to prevent drain back. <clears throat> so that's basically your cooler. And the other thing in this system is this little check valve right here. It's basically a cup plug and you got this little check valve 
And the reason for that check valve is it goes in right here. And if you remember from the drain back, you got your converter here. And if that check valve wasn't in here, it's in that circuit where this is being charged. And if that check valve wasn't there, when you shut the vehicle off, your converter can drain back all the way down to the bottom of the uh, converter hub because uh, that orifice there would just leak it back to the sump. So the reason for that check valve right there is to hold that fluid in when the, when the vehicle's not running. And if it wasn't there, you basically get converter drain back all the way to your sump. Now, kind of interesting, I went to look for this in the shift kit and it's not in this shift kit. I've never put one of these shift kits in, but it's not in the shift kit anywhere. I'm very surprised because this is a heavy duty shift kit. And one of the reasons for changing this valve is the fact that this is aluminum and the one that comes from the factory is uh, plastic. So they give you this little screw here. I'm just gonna screw this in here. Go right into the, into the cup plug and you take your dikes and pull the cup plug out. Take your cup plug out and the factory ones are made of plastic, which they're okay in a lighter duty situation, but if this thing was to ever overheat to the point where it melted this plastic, and that's the problem with them, if, they, if it's in a super heavy duty truck, and if you remember the hottest fluid coming out of the torque converter is going to that the end of that ball seating it. And if that overheats big time in a heavy duty situation, when you shut the vehicle down, that thing is so hot, it's malleable and it melts shut. And what that, what that check valve does is that whole cavity there lubricates your entire overdrive uh, gear train and the overdrive, the coast clutch drum bushing and everything in your overdrive. So that's your entire lube system of the overdrive. So I'm very surprised that they did not put that in the shift kit, in the Transgo shift kit. But if you're running a heavy duty vehicle, make sure you get that aluminum valve to put in this stator here to prevent that problem it, it should the fluid ever overheat to the point where it melts that plastic. And another thing I didn't mention in the last video, super important, but even if, say you were gonna change out the torque converter, uh, because for whatever reason, and uh, you're not uh, rebuilding the trans or changing the transmission or whatever, this seal here, this is basically the front seal on the stator. And that what that seal does is it, it uh, seals between the release side of the torque converter clutch and the uh, pressure side, the apply side of the torque converter clutch right here. And if these seals wear out, you'll basically get leakage between the two and it'll cause all kinds of torque converter clutch issues as far as uh, throwing codes, throwing check engine lights, burning clutches. So always do that on a rebuild, obviously. But that was one of the things where that crack in that stator, if that thing would have started expanding, you would, we would have had leakage there, even though we had a brand new seal or whatever, and that would have started creating problems with the lockup system. So always change that seal, make sure the grooves are in good shape. There's no cracks, obviously. And on this 700 here, they come with a O-ring on the end of the input shaft 
does the same thing that groove right there takes an o-ring those o-rings will shrink and cause the same problems but it's all that as important i guess to make sure that that seal is in good shape for those reasons and uh it's just another thing to look for and watch out for as far as your torque converter lockup systems go. Okay, the last piece of the puzzle in this hydraulic system, because obviously there's a lot of hydraulics going on in this pump, but this pressure regulator valve, this is a Sonics valve. It's, it's called a line to lube valve. And if you look at these, the difference between the factory and the Sonics one, there's a groove here and what this valve does, it's called line to lube, and it basically ensures that you have line pressure going to your lube system and your converter charge system at all times, no matter what. Because sometimes there's a situation where you have a high load, low RPM situation, and it can cut off the flow going to the, the torque converter and the cooler itself but if you look at this close let's just call this right in here and the way i was explaining before you got line pressure coming to your converter regulator valve which is feeding the whole uh converter charge and the cooler flow and there's times when like i say under high load low rpm it can restrict the flow actually going to it because it gets fed from the pressure regulator valve and what they do is they put a valve system in here that ensures at all times that uh, you get an adequate uh, pressure and volume to charge the converter and uh, your for your cooler flow. So very important. Uh, I they make a lot of these valves for different transmissions, and anytime they make one, I use them because I've seen big time problems with uh, that circuit and it's all caused by the pressure regulator valve. So we're putting the line to lube Sonics valve in there and that's gonna take care of that. And that's pretty much the hydraulic system in the pump itself, other than the pump gears, which we're gonna talk about once I start putting that. Yeah, quick note, one thing I've just forgot about was um, the old school way to do this was drill a hole through this partition here so basically you get line pressure going to your converter charge. But what that would cause back in the day, which we've been talking about today is drain back, converter drain back. So the old school way was to drill that partition and it actually says it right in this shift kit here. Don't drill hole here. If it has the hole, plug it. And that's the reason for that. Cause a lot of the old school pumps and uh, if they've been rebuilt, they'll have that hole in there. So if it has that hole, plug it up and use the line to lube Sonics valve because it has a check valve in it to where it'll let fluid charge. But when you shut it, shut it down, it shuts off the flow so you don't get drain back. So that's the whole purpose of that. And it's mentioned in the shift kit. Okay, as you can see, we finally got our stator together. We got a good uh, stator body a good stator itself and if you look at it close it's uh it's pressed down flush and all i did was chamfer the body and it pressed down just fine just like i thought but that was interesting so we got our good stator body good stator it's all pressed together everything's happy there and uh, we're just going to keep moving on with this pump all right, start with, we're just going to start with this pump body and gears, and we had to get a, a good use when you can't find new ones, but uh, this thing is in good shape. The, the last ones, uh, the last one that come out of it was really scored right here from the metal, and the pump gears were all chewed up, but we got our good pump body. I got the bushing out of it, and we got our new bushing here, and if you look at this groove here, when you take these out, you got to notice where that lube groove is. And that's right up here in the, in the starting in the pressure side. So basically, when I go to put these bushings in, just set it in there. And the biggest thing with bushings is to drive them in straight. 
and you can see it's a little cocked right there. So I'm going to bring it out and get it more straight. And just drive it in nice and straight, nice and easy. And you can tell if it's going in cock because it'll, it'll, it'll fight you. do when I put bushings in uh, some of you guys have been asking about putting bushings and I haven't showed that yet but what I'm doing here is I'm driving this bushing all the way down flush with a bigger bushing driver but if you notice this bushing here it's not all the way down it's still got to go a little bit so once I get it all the way down flush and the reason I do that is because if I was to put this driver in there and drive it in like that it can leave a, a mark where this edge is. So now that it's all the way down, all I got to do is drive it flush, drive it home. Or drive it a little farther than flush, I should say. And you can tell when it bottoms out just by the sound of the hammer. And now it's all the way flush because there's an edge right there that keeps that bushing from walking out. So we should be good to go right there. Put a tiny mark right there just from that bushing driver, but it'll be fine. No worries there. All right, now that it's driven all the way down as far as it needs to go, there's two little slots here. Just need to peen these over. Basically with a, uh, a dull punch, or I, I just use a screwdriver. It doesn't really matter what you use. You don't have to get crazy with it. But then I usually just take a pick and work out the dimples that I put in the bushing. Nice and easy. Both sides. That way there's no ridges that'll catch on your uh, converter hub. And one thing I always do, never fail to do this because it's burnt me enough times, but check your converter bushing on the converter that you have. This is actually a C4 converter. A uh, buddy of mine, Steve Dustin, Dustin Racing, shout out to you guys. He lent me this converter just to be able to check this hub because I don't have a Ford converter here. And uh, this is actually a C4, same size. But what I do is just put the, put it down on the hub and I usually just knock it, knock it, nice and easy, 90 degrees, knock it again, knock it again, and make sure everything's fine. Cause sometimes you get a couple little burrs on the edges of these bushings and that just seats it in nice and tight and everything's happy. But always do that. Always check your pump bushing before you put the pump together and you got it off the trans all together. If you didn't check that, sometimes the converter doesn't want to go in and, and you're jamming it in there and you're just ruining that bushing. So always make sure that bushing's happy before you put the rest of the pump together. All right, moving on to this front seal. There's an actual spring in here that keeps that helps the seal keep tension on the hub itself and what I always do is just take some of my assembly lube and wipe it right down in that groove where that spring is so when I knock the seal in it doesn't knock that spring off always do that it's an easy step but if you forget it a lot of times that spring will get knocked off and I've worked that spring back on when it's in there with a pick but it's not fun so do that and then there's a rubber part here. I just lick the rubber part with put a little spit on it. It's the best thing for rubber seals. And then what I do is just put a little Loctite 
This is just extra insurance. It's not completely necessary, but I do it anyway. Just a little bit around the uh, the metal part, not the rubber part. And then just knock it home. Try to get it in there straight. It's solid. Two good solid clunks. That thing's good to go. And the front seal is happy, happy. That's the way I like to do my front seals in these, but and that should work out fine. Uh, one of the main things with this pump body is I mentioned this in my evolution video, but if you look at these holes here, these holes right here, these are quite large. I don't even know how big they are, they're like three-eighths holes. But the early pumps had real small holes here, and that's the suction part of the pump. So if you're working on an 89 to 94, 95, or whatever, biggest thing to note is to make sure it's got the big hole pump. Because the small hole pump, it doesn't feed the, the pump gears itself. And if it can't feed the pump gears, the pump gears can't put it out, put out enough volume. So always remember to check and make sure that's got the big hole pump and you should be fine there. Okay, now that we got our bushing and our seal in there, let's move on to the pump gears and very important here. Um, we're putting new pump gears in. They sent me a good used pump, which it, the pump was fine and just had used pump gears in it. And I mentioned this in my hot hydraulics 101 video, but I'm just gonna touch on it here real quick. These transmissions are known for delayed engagement. And uh, that's one of the reasons we set the forwards clutches up tighter. And we got 40 thousandths with four clutches in the direct. All this stuff makes a difference in having a, a, a non-delayed engagement, I, I guess you call it. But one of the main issues is with the pumps in these things and the pump gears themselves. And if you look at this really close, we got new pump gears here and if you notice that clearance there, it's very slight. It's probably about two thousandths, if that. And the used ones, you can hear that clicking. There's a lot more clearance in there and you lose pump volume at low RPM. So I always put new pump gears in my E4ODs, regardless of how good the used ones are for that reason. And Again, just touching on it, but I mentioned this in my Hydraulics 101 video, if you wanna see that. But one of the reasons they have delayed engagements is if you look at this oil schematic here and you look at all these blue circuits that are not charged when it's in park. And when you put it, just put the shifter down in reverse, all these red circuits have to charge with fluid. And this is a huge transmission. So at low RPM, the pump isn't putting out as much volume as it can to fill all those cavities, all those clutches and everything it needs to in time to avoid a delayed engagement. So that's one of the reasons, it's one of the characteristics of this trans because it's so big. So you gotta make sure your pump is in tip top shape, clutch clearances are set up right and you generally don't have a problem. But that's the reason for that. All right, the only other thing to check with this is uh, basically just put the pump gears in dry. And checking the side clearance of the pump gears. And all I'm going to do is put my straight edge on it. And first thing I do is spin the gears all the way around, make sure that there's no uh, marks or nicks that are going to catch that, that uh, straight edge. And then we just check, I got a one and a half thousand feeler gauge here. And we're gonna check the side clearance of the pump gears. And you don't want more than two. This is a one and a half and it's just barely sticky. So it's probably got like 1.6 right, right in there, but that's perfect. Just check it, make sure it's not three and a half and you didn't get any bad Chinese pump gears that are, are too thin. 
very important. But anything over two, and then you, it can create uh, pump volume problems. But quick note on that, and also brand new pump gears. What I did was I took and I showed this on my C4 video, but if you haven't seen this, I got a piece of marble here. And if you ever get a piece of marble, you put your straight edge on it and make sure that thing's dead flat. And I just took some 600 sandpaper and sanded the brand new gears, make sure they were perfect on each side. No, uh, no scarring or nicks or anything. And that just kind of ensures you that you're not gonna have any problems. So basically we're just gonna, I usually just take some of my juice, put coat the pump bushing completely, and seal, put some in here, on the side, just all over the place. that a little bit of trans fluid and another step that I do is just put a little bit of trans gel put the pump gear in there nice and smooth oh another thing here always make sure that this uh this inner gear goes one way it has to go with those uh those ears there towards the converter if you were to put it in backwards this is another backwards thing if you were to put that in backwards and then bolt your transmission to the engine it would jam those pump gears right into that stator and destroy your pump in a heartbeat so you always got to make sure that those uh those spots there with the ears are facing the converter and on the converter hub. Not a big deal, but that important. And I usually just put a little bit of, just a little bit. And that kind of ensures me that uh, there's gonna be suction when, uh, when this thing first fires up and that pump will fill the converter immediately instead of being any kind of delay. Get that in there, move it around, make sure the pump gears are nice and free, there's no chunkiness going on, and that pump is happy, happy, happy. And that's all you got to do with the pump body and gears. Okay, now that we got the pump body and gears all set up, moving on to this stator, and as you know, a lot was going on with this, but it's coming together. We got them pressed together, everything's fine there, but... Moving on to these bushings, I took these bushings out and again, you guys have been asking me about bushings and how I take bushings out is, uh, I got these three chisels here. What you need to take bushings out is, a, it's called a cape chisel. And I don't know where my hammer is. These are basically made up cape chisels if you come in close. I got small, medium, and large. If you look at, if you look at them, I've kind of made these out of uh, chisels that have bro broke punches, I should say. But you have to use a cape chisel when you're doing bushings. And if you look at these old ones, I already took them out just to save time with the video. But I'm going to explain how you, how I do it. If you look at a oh, you look at a brand new bushing, there is a parting line in the bushing right there. All bushings have a parting line like that. And the key to taking a bushing out is you just take your cape chisel. And that's what I did with both of these. You got to look really close. If you need them, you got to use your 250s. But you got to find the parting line in the bushing. And you go right down the edge of the parting line on the inside. And carefully, because this changing bushings and transmissions, that's probably one of the hardest things of building a transmission. But... You got to come in here carefully, find that parting line, and just work that parting line all the way down until that bushing starts collapsing and moving. And as you can see, I got that one out. And same thing here. I just chiseled the parting line until that thing gave free, and it came right out. But that is the key to taking bushings out is finding that parting line and using a cape chisel. 
So in the name of saving time in the video, I already took them out, but that's how you do that. And I got both of these out and I'm gonna go ahead and press these in. But one thing to note here, if you look at this really close, in chiseling that and getting that, you usually put a few nicks in it. This isn't bad at all. It's just got a few nicks in it. But what you wanna do, if there's any high spots where ridges are hanging up, you wanna file that down because if you don't, when you press that new bushing in, it'll distort that bushing because there's ridges there that are into the into the space basically. So you just file the file the ridges, any ridges that you put off, uh, put in there from your from your cape chisel, get that nice and flat again, and your bushing should go just fine. Uh, press down into the stator, but. If you notice one thing here, I saw this bushing. Always check your bushings first. If you look at this bushing here, it's got a nick in it. Always check your bushings on your shaft because see it won't even go on there with that nick there. And that's a brand new bushing. But just take your new bushing, check it on the shaft, make sure that they're good and free. And you should be good to go there as far as that's concerned. But just some of the tips in putting bushings in. Because like I say, Putting bushings in and getting them right is one of the hardest parts about rebuilding transmissions. And using a cape chisel, finding the parting line, and filing any burrs off from you chiseling them out is the three main things to know. Okay, another thing on this front bushing, and if you notice, if you remember from the last video, they're different bushings. And this, this front stator bushing has the grooves going all the way through it. But one thing I like to do is where that parting line is, I like to put it down in the stator where it's solid. I don't like that parting line being in where the, uh, the groove is for the TCC release pressure. I like it to be solid on the stator itself instead of floating. Cause uh, in my opinion, that'll distort the bushing. So just important to me, it is what it is, but we're gonna go ahead and put that bushing in. Okay, for video's sake, I went ahead and put this bushing in and it's down seated, everything's happy, but I'm gonna go through the whole procedure of this, putting this back one in, which it's basically the same as the front one. But if you look at this bushing, if you remember, this is the one that uh, doesn't go all the way through, that back stator bushing, and the gr lube groove is in the release side cavity. And there's nothing to worry about as far as the, uh, the clocking of it but all I do is get the bushing down and you can see that it's a little cock but just got to start it I start the bushing driver on the cock side and just tap it get it going and check it this is where you want to slow down and just make sure everything's happy and it feels like it's going in perfectly straight. So far, so good. And at this point, I'm going to take it over to the press and press it the rest of the way in. Again, I like to put my bushings in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go flush with a bigger bushing driver, so there's no chance of marking that bushing. Nice and easy. Flush, and then just take it where I need to go with the actual proper driver. Same procedure on the front one, identical. Just gotta take your time with bushings. And that should do it.
one nice part about this is I have another stator here and I can kind of judge how deep the bushing is. Now this one is not that critical because there's no lube holes in either the front one or the back one as far as the depth of the bushing. So it actually can be a little bit, you know, 20 thousandths here, 20 thousandths there. But as you can see, there's no lube holes in the shaft or the stator itself. So, and that's, it's basically that simple. You just gotta take your time. And I don't know of any other way to actually put bushings in other than having a bushing driver set. I don't know if you can just buy one for E4OD 4100, or I've actually, sometimes I have used sockets, but I don't recommend it because it is not pretty. Sometimes you gotta clean up the bushing afterwards, but I don't know personally of any other way to put bushings in other than actually using the proper tools. So, got our rear bushing in, front bushings in, that's all happy. Basically ready to assemble the stator, put all the valves in. Okay, and then the all critical test is to check the bushing, always check the bushing, just like the converter, but uh, put your shaft in or whatever bushing you're uh, just put in and make sure it's not too tight for one and make sure it's the right bushing and that thing is happy happy it's nice and free no worries there basically zero play because they're brand new bushings so we're good to go there and moving on here to basically just assembling this we got everything prepped ready the uh converter charge valve if you remember and the uh, shift kit the yellow spring we're just gonna put some lube on this and stick it in the bore nice and free you can hear it rocking stick our spring in and our cup plug or our end plug I should say Nice and easy. Get our clip in there. And they're good, no worries there. Got our converter regulator valve in. Now this TCC, the lockup valve, if you remember, on look over here the uh, lockup firmness you remember from the last video we're going to drill this out to 76 or actually 78 the original one is about 62 so we're going to go to 78 drill that out to 78 maybe a hair more that way we get a, a little firmer lockup this is not a crazy heavy duty truck. So that should make that, that converter lock up nice and tight, but not too tight and not too soft. Just the way I like it. There's nothing worse than a weak shift. And basically check our TCC valve. Same way. Put this thing in there. You hear it? This is the way I like to check my valves. Nice and free. Beautiful. Best sound in the world. Stick that in there. Stick our end plug in here. Clip seated in really nice. Nice and free. No worries there. Always lube your valves. Probably could have waited until I had them all in, but oh well. No worries. That thing is perfect. 78,000. And last but not least is the pressure regulator valve. Now this is in the shift kit. 
this is how they set this up and whatever shift kit you're using just follow the instructions but this is a kind of interesting shift kit it's got it's got two little uh spring seats and different springs you got two orange springs here the orange and the orange all these are from the uh, transgo shift kit so just follow the instructions it's really not a big deal but that's the lineup and go ahead and get this thing in here, I suppose. Without messing everything up. Got a lot going on with this valve spool here. And making sure it's nice and free. Falls right back down. No worries there. Both springs, the inner spring, the outer spring is basically just for your baseline pressure and the inner spring is what gives you your boost from the boost valve. And if you want to know more about that, the uh, Hydraulics 101 explains that a lot deeper. But put a little juice in here. Make the valve slide in easy. And I gotta get my snap ring pliers. I like to coat these valves because you can't you can't get any lube in there once it's inside there. So I like to put lube in there in here now. Get that nice and coated so there's no chance of it rusting. And uh Let's get this valve in. Okay, I had to run and get my snap ring pliers, but what I like to do is set my snap ring pliers up with the snap ring there. That way I'm ready to go and I'm not fumbling around fighting springs and everything else. But basically just pick this up and get it going in there. That way I can work it all in at one shot if I'm lucky. If I'm not lucky, well then we have to fight it a little bit, but. And it's gonna fight me a little bit. There we go. Popped it in, happy, happy. It's just a lot easier doing that in one shot instead of fighting that, fighting this. One shot, you're good to go. So, we have our Lock up control valve here, converter charge valve there, all the uh, <clears throat> converter regulator valve with our line to lube valve, boost valve, all good to go. This thing's happy, happy. Happy stator, nice and flush. New bushings. And the last but not least, I guess, is this lube check valve that we talked about earlier. A little bit of lube down in there, drop it in, take your check plug, and drive it home. Just drive it just below flush, and stake it. no chance of it coming out and that's all happening okay at this point we got the pump body and gears happy happy we got the stator from hell happy happy this thing is good to go all we got to do now is bolt these two together nice and easy get it kind of where it goes Here, just pump alignment ring. Get it somewhere what it goes.
always like to make sure that they're level. That, that thing isn't sitting diagonally. Start tightening it up and then get it somewhat aligned with the bolt holes. Happy, happy. Won't move. 20 foot pounds. 20 foot pounds on these pumps. Getting close. I'm gonna cinch these down with my air. If you're not comfortable with it, just do it by hand. Super light pressure. Super light. Oh boy, here we go. kind of crisscross there's a specific sequence but it's just a matter of crisscrossing from the inner to the outer done always recheck make sure everyone is torqued so many times you'll find one isn't torqued and never recheck enough and that should do it for the pump from hell other than normally I have the converter here, but how I'm gonna do this, since I don't have the actual converter here, I'm gonna go down in here without hurting the seal, don't hurting the seal or damaging anything, checking these pump gears and making sure they're free. Oh, they're nice and free. Oh yeah, they're happy, but always make sure once you bolt them together that the, those pump gears are riding free and Nothing is going on inside this pump. And that thing is good to go. Okay, now that we got the pump done, basically just gonna build our tower and we're done for today. And that, that'll be 100% of the guts built. So uh, next step is got this thrust washer here. Again, nice and flimsy. No worries there. Get that on the stator. And there's also a bearing here that rides on the end of the stator. Go ahead and put that in. So you got thrust washer and a bearing here. And we've got our sealing rings. I'm going to put a little bit of trans gel just to hold them in. finally get the air check or coast clutch drone 
couldn't do that before because we didn't have a pump together. Got the rings in right, the scarf cuts in properly. Always make sure that scarf cuts in right. And let's uh, air check this thing. And hope there's no worries there. I'm not expecting any problems, but you never know. A little bit of juice on here. Never have enough lube. Clutch is happy. It took a minute for that uh, trans gel to get out of them sealing rings so they could expand. But that's good to go. No worries there. Keep going with the tower. Happy, happy. Easy. Nice to me. Mm, not going to cooperate, huh? How about that? Hear the clunk? It's all about the clunk when you're putting this stuff together. That way you know it's not hanging up on any clutches. Shell and whole rear part. And that is the entire E4 OD. Happy, happy. Bye. Uh, I'm not going to put you through that, but this makes me happy when we get to this point. As of now, this thing is good to go, ready to go in the case. I think the next video is going to be loading the case because I want to see the progress now. All we got to do is load the guts and do the shift kit, and this thing is good to go. But the reason I do this is I built a whole transmission on the bench, and all there is is these two other parts ready to go in the trans. That way it simplifies it for me. And all I have to do is concentrate on building the trains instead of finding parts and everything else. So that's why I do that. I hope that helps you guys out there, but that's the reason I do it. So we're good to go here. Pump's finally happy. Got our tower built. Next video, we're gonna be uh, loading the guts. And I'm gonna show you guys all the prep on the case that I do and go from there. But as of, as of yet, we're looking good. Thanks for watching. Take care. Like and subscribe if you like what you see. Let me know. Any comments are welcome. Take care. We'll see you later.